As soon as there is a change in Western policy on the use of long-range missiles, Ukraine will strike Russian airbases, ammunition depots and other military targets that threaten its territory, the Times writes. As George Barros, a research fellow at the Institute for the Study of War, an American think tank noted, in addition to the aircraft that Russia could withdraw from the borders, there are hundreds of other high-value assets that the Russians cannot remove from the ATACMS zone. It is also indicated that the Anglo-French Storm Shadow missiles are particularly useful for penetrating bunkers. They can hit fuel depots, vehicle repair and recovery bases, command posts and other logistics hubs. The abandonment of these bases could worsen Russian logistics on a massive scale and reduce Russia's ability to deliver supplies to the front in Ukraine, Barros added. The Ukrainian military source added that a change in Western policy would prevent Russian strikes and provide the necessary deterrence. All this is to bring us closer to the end of the war. Ben Barry, a senior fellow for land warfare and the International Institute for Strategic Studies, said US missiles were still more effective against a range of battlefield targets. They have a warhead that is designed to explode on the surface, so they are very good for targets like artillery batteries, division headquarters, ammunition dumps and anti-craft missile sites. They are not as useful against targets that the Storm Shadow is useful for. It's like comparing a knife and a fork. You can use either one, but it's better to use them together. Recall that earlier, the Times, citing sources familiar with the situation, reported that US President Joe Biden may allow Ukraine to use British and French Storm Shadow stroke scalp missiles to strike Russian territory, but not American long-range weapons, in particular ATACMS missiles. The US, which has imposed restrictions on its equipment used to strike Russia, is currently not allowing its navigation data to be used, with President Joe Biden's administration citing the risk of escalating war against Russia. Vladimir Putin has warned against the move, saying the Ukrainian military would need help programming missions from NATO experts to launch long-range strikes. The Russian Defense Ministry claimed that Russian soldiers had regained control of 10 settlements earlier captured by Ukraine in Kursk Oblast. The statement follows reports claiming that Moscow had launched a counterattack in the embattled Russian region which has been partially held by Ukrainian forces since the start of the cross-border incursion. President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed these claims. Everything is going according to our plan, he said. The Ukrainian crowdsourced monitoring group Deep State wrote that the situation on the left flank of Ukrainian forces in Kursk Oblast has worsened. Russians began active assault operations, ferrying armored vehicles across the Syme River and other smaller rivers. Ukraine was previously targeting bridges and pontoon crossings across the Syme River in an apparent attempt to cut off Russian troops in the Glushkovsky district. But Russia's defense ministry released footage showing what it said were pontoon crossings being built over a river and Ukrainian military vehicles destroyed by Russian troops. It said the videos were filmed in the Kursk region. Recall, over a month ago Ukraine launched a daring incursion into Russia's Kursk region, partly in the hope that Russia would divert its troops there from Donetsk. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russian forces have started counteroffensive actions in the region but insisted that Ukrainian troops had anticipated such a response. Zelensky earlier said that Ukraine controls over 1,300 square kilometers and around 100 settlements in Kursk Oblast. According to Kiev, the incursion was meant to divert Russian forces from Donbass and to prevent further Russian cross-border attacks from Kursk Oblast.